Hey everyone and welcome back for another deep dive. You sent us a really intriguing article titled A New Future for LPG in Australia. It's a bold claim and we're going to unpack it right here. Definitely Ed Turner. We're diving into the world of LPG, exploring its potential for a comeback. And to be honest, when I first saw the title, I was skeptical. Yeah, I can see why it's <laughs> not exactly the hottest topic in clean energy these days, is it? Not really. So for anyone who needs a little refresher or maybe wasn't even alive when LPG was having its moment, uh -huh. the article does a great job of laying out the history of LPG use in Australia. Can you give us a quick rundown? Sure thing. So rewind back to the early 2000s, LPG conversions were all the rage. It was like the cool thing to do for your car and the numbers back it up. Yeah. <laughs> How many people were actually using LPG back then? At its peak, over 600,000 vehicles in Australia were running on LPG. Wow, 600,000. That's a lot. What was driving that trend? Was it purely a cost thing? Well, cost was definitely a factor, especially the government offering some sweet incentives and tax breaks. Mm. But it wasn't just about saving a few bucks at the pump. There was a growing awareness of the environmental impact of traditional fuels. And LPG was, and still is, inherently cleaner burning. So you have this kind of win-win situation, good for your wallet, and potentially good for the planet. Right. Makes sense. So we had this boom period, everyone's loving LPG, and then it's like, it just vanished. It's true. It kind of fell off the radar, didn't it? What happened? Did the incentives dry up, or was there something else going on? It was a combination of things, actually. Yes, the government incentives started to disappear, and they introduced that excise tax, which didn't help. Right. The tax man always has a way of... Exactly. But it yeah. wasn't just that consumer preferences shifted. New petrol and diesel engines became more efficient. And then you had the rise of hybrids, which kind of stole LPG's thunder. It's like that time I switched phone carriers for a great deal, then they scrapped it a few months later. Ouch. Oh. Yeah, I've been there. So it sounds like LPG became yesterday's news, at least for a while. But this article is making a case for a cleaner LPG. Not just a cheaper alternative, but a greener one. That's a pretty big claim to make. It is. But they might be onto something. Mm -hmm. We're not just talking about regular old LPG here. Mm -hmm. This is about new technologies yeah. like bio LPG and renewable LPG that could significantly reduce emissions. Okay, now we're getting to the good stuff. This idea of a cleaner LPG future. That's what I think has everyone intrigued. Cleaner LPG. Okay, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Well, not quite yet. Right, there must be a catch. What are we missing here? It's not so much a catch as it is a challenge. Scaling up. Scaling up. Production right now, bio LPG and renewable LPG, they're still relatively niche. We're talking about ramping up production to meet potentially massive demand if this takes off. Okay, so it's more a matter of can they actually make enough of this cleaner LPG? That's a big piece of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. The technology is there. It's just a question of making it commercially viable on a large scale. And that takes investment, research, infrastructure, the whole shebang. So it's like we're waiting for the kinks to be ironed out. In a nutshell, yeah. But while those kinks are being addressed, it's worth diving into the numbers because the potential environmental benefits here are pretty remarkable. Okay, yeah, let's talk emissions. How much cleaner are we talking about here? Give me the nitty gritty. All right, let's break it down. First up, carbon dioxide, the big kahuna. Compared to your standard E10 petrol, cleaner LPG can potentially cut CO2 emissions by around 28%. 28%? That's not insignificant. Not at all. But where cleaner LPG really flexes its muscles is particulate matter those tiny particles that wreak havoc on our lungs and the environment. Ah, right, especially here in Australia with all the diesel vehicles on the road. Precisely. Our diesel quality isn't exactly top-notch, which means more of those nasty particulates. But cleaner LPG. Well, it blows diesel out of the water. We're talking about a 93% reduction in particulate matter. 93%? You're kidding? Nope, those are the numbers. It's a game changer, particularly for air quality in urban areas. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, I had no idea the difference was that significant. Are there other emission reductions we should be aware of? Absolutely. Carbon monoxide, another villain in the air pollution saga. Yeah. Cleaner LPG cuts that in half compared to E10 petrol. 50% reduction. Okay. So, yeah. Starting to see why they call it cleaner LPG. And we're not done. Nitrogen oxides, major contributors to smog and respiratory problems. Cleaner LPG cuts them in half too. All right. All right. You've convinced me. From an emission standpoint, this cleaner LPG seems like a no-brainer. So what's next? What needs to happen to get this show on the road? So we've got this cleaner LPG ticking all the right boxes on the environmental front, but as you alluded to earlier, there are always hurdles when it comes to adopting new technologies. What are some of the biggest challenges facing cleaner LPG? Well, you've hit the nail on the head there. 
It's one thing to have this promising technology, but quite another to actually get it into the hands or rather the fuel tanks of everyday Australians. So what needs to happen? What are the key things that could really make or break cleaner LPG in Australia? Well, first and foremost, we need to talk about infrastructure. Right, because it's not like every service station out there has a bio LPG pump just yet, right? Exactly. Well, Australia actually has a decent amount of traditional LPG infrastructure, thanks to its popularity in the past. We need a significant investment to upgrade those systems to handle bio LPG and renewable LPG. Think about it. We're talking about new storage tanks, pumps, the whole nine yards. Okay, so a pretty big upfront investment, but potentially using some existing infrastructure, which is good. But what about the cost to consumers? I mean, let's face it, most people aren't going to switch fuels just because it's good for the planet. They have to be able to afford it. You're absolutely right. Price is always a factor. And right now, because those bio and renewable LPG options are still in their early stages, they do tend to be a bit pricier than your typical petrol or diesel. So how do we bridge that gap? How do we make cleaner LPG a more attractive option financially for everyday Aussies? Well, the article actually touches on this. It suggests that government incentives could be a game changer, just like they were back in the early 2000s when LPG first gained popularity. Ah, so a little bit of history repeating itself. Exactly. They're suggesting things like tax breaks for people who make the switch to cleaner LPG vehicles, or even subsidies to encourage the installation of more refueling infrastructure and yeah. make it worthwhile for both consumers and businesses. Okay, so we've got the infrastructure, the cost, Anything else we're missing? Public perception. Ah, uh, right, because when a lot of people think about LPG, they probably still think about, well, those old gas guzzlers from the 90s, right? Exactly. <sighs> we need a bit of an image makeover for LPG. We need to get the word out there about these cleaner, greener alternatives. Bio LPG, renewable LPG, these are not your grandpa's fuels. I like that. Not your grandpa's fuel. So education is key, right? Absolutely. People need to understand the environmental benefits, the potential cost savings in the long run. Once people realize that cleaner LPG isn't just a fuel, it's a step toward a more sustainable future, that's when you'll start to see real change. It's about changing the narrative, right? It's not just about filling up your tank. It's about fueling a movement. Nicely put. Well, it's been fascinating to dive into this whole world of cleaner LPG. I have to admit, I started this deep dive a bit skeptical, but I'm honestly surprised by what I've learned. Me too. There's a lot of potential here. I think the big takeaway for me is that cleaner LPG could be a really valuable tool in our fight against climate change. It's not the only solution, and it's not a magic bullet, but it could be a really important piece of the puzzle. Couldn't agree more, especially in a country like Australia, where transportation makes up a significant chunk of our carbon footprint. Exploring every avenue for decarbonization is crucial. And it's exciting to think that we might already have some of the infrastructure in place to make this transition smoother. It's not going to happen overnight, but with the right investments, the right policies, and perhaps most importantly, the right information in the hands of the public, I think cleaner LPG could have a real shot at making a difference. It's a fascinating time to be talking about alternative fuels, that's for sure. Absolutely. Well, a huge thank you to you, our expert, for guiding us through this complex but incredibly important topic. Your insights have been invaluable. It's been my pleasure. Always enjoy a good deep dive. And to all of our listeners, thank you for joining us on this journey. We hope this deep dive has sparked your curiosity and maybe even inspired you to think differently about the future of fuel in Australia. Until next time, keep those questions coming, keep exploring, and we'll see you on the next deep dive.